It's October 31st, 2020, and I just bought my second Tulip Poplar Tree of the Year. This one is in amazing shape. Just this month, I found out that if you ask your nursery, or at least my nursery, for a certain type of tree, they can order it for you from another nursery. So I did that, and this one arrived and was in much better shape than the one that I found there on their lot back in May. I didn't even really think about this before I bought this tree, but once they loaded it in my truck with a forklift, I started to think about it a little bit. Even though this is a fairly small tree, it is quite heavy, so you want to make sure that you have someone to help you unload. In my case, the dog wasn't much help. The experts will tell you to dig the width of your hole at least two to three times wider than your root ball. More if you're dealing with compacted soil. So here, I'm measuring to get an idea of how wide I do need to go on this one. This one is about 17 and a half inches, uh, we'll say 18. So my hole needs to be at least 36 to 54 inches wide. I do have compacted soil, so it wouldn't hurt for me to go even wider than that. For me, the hardest part about planting a tree is trying to determine the location in the yard to plant it. The main concern for this tree is I don't want it too close to the house because this is a large tree that can get up to 100 feet high. Next, I'm trying to stay away from an in-ground dog fence I dug out about four or five years ago. And then another is I do want to build a small shed uh, in this area here. And the fact that that Yoshino just died, I think that's where I'm going to put it. So the next step is measuring out my hole. I think I started here with two times the width of the root ball, but I did go a little bigger once I started digging. Next, I'm going to measure how deep my root ball needs to go. You want your root ball sitting on some firm soil. You don't want uh, to have loose soil at the bottom because what will happen is once you start to water it, it will settle and your tree will be buried too deep. I have read online, and I even think my nursery said it, that you can leave the wire basket and the burlap on the tree. The roots will have no problem breaking through the burlap, and it'll eventually rot. And while this may be true, I think that's a bad idea, especially leaving the basket attached. While it may work in the short term, there's no doubt it will eventually cause it to die. Since I want this tree to be around for a long time, I'm going to remove both. But do be careful not to disturb the root ball as much as possible. Sometimes they can fall apart. They say to use wire cutters to get the basket off, but I've had no luck with that. I'm not sure if I've just had really uh, serious baskets on mine, but it would almost take bolt cutters to get these off. So what I try to do is just pry it loose without, again, don't break the root ball. Just pry it loose and then pull the tree from the basket. So this next part is probably the, one of the most important parts when uh, planting a tree, and it, that is trying to find the root flare. Whenever the nurseries or whoever grows these trees puts them in their containers or in their root balls, they are always four to six inches deep. And this is one of the main reasons that many of the trees that I've planted in my yard in the past have all died is because I plant everything ground level 
and then the root flare is actually four to six inches too deep. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of tearing away at the top, looking for the flare. So as you can tell already at this point, I've pulled away maybe three to four inches from the root ball. Take this into consideration when you're measuring the depth of your hole, because that four to six inches now means I am four to six inches too deep. Because it was buried too deep into its root ball, there are some adventurous roots that are poking through. That one there, I'm going to go ahead and cut off, but there are three or four right below my finger. I'm going to have to leave those because that, that's really getting into cutting too many roots for its uh, transplant. So what I want to do is plant it above grade enough so that I can come back after it's established and cut away some of those other roots, but I want to get it established before I do that. Like I was saying earlier, removing the top part of the root ball to expose the flare has now made my ball smaller than it was, and thus my hole larger than it should be. So I'm going to have to backfill a little bit, um, and also because I'm not really able to get all the way to the flare, I'm going to backfill a little more than needed, maybe have this thing four to six inches above grade, uh, because it'll, it's going to settle, because I'm having to backfill. And also, once I am able to try to get to the root flare, that I'll be able to have some room to work with. So now that the tree's in the ground, it's time to water it. And if you watch the 60 second version of this video, one of my favorite parts of it is when you can see the tree actually settle when it's sped up. So I'm not gonna show you the entire watering in normal speed because I do, that, do this for about 10 minutes, but I'm gonna speed it up here in a second and watch how it settles. It's hard to tell from this angle, but it is a few inches above grade, so that's where I want it, but some of the dirt around the root ball settled more than, uh, than where the root ball was. So what I'm gonna do is dig up this Yoshino cherry tree over here, and there's some good soil underneath there, so I'm gonna add it around to fill in the, um, 
fill in the low places, and now I'm gonna put some mulch on it, stake it, and tie it off. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below and also think about subscribing as I will provide updates on how this tree is doing in future videos.